Hey everyone, my name is Rachel and today we are going to be delving back into every teenager's home away from home on the internet, Tumblr. So the topic of today's video, when I first heard about it and the community around it on Tumblr, I thought, hey, this will make a nice, light, silly video, we can have a giggle, it'll be something a bit stupid to talk about, and then I did a bit of research. And it's a strange concept. I still don't fully understand it, but from what I've learned about it, what I do know, I'm, I'm left quite concerned about a, a big number of the people involved. Today we are going to be talking about what is known as soul bonding. It's a bit of an unusual concept and in researching this video I definitely fell into a kind of rabbit hole on Tumblr. I felt very overwhelmed at first so I'm going to try and start kind of explaining this simply and explaining how the Tumblr community define soul bonding or being soul bonded. So one blog in particular writes that a soul bond is any kind of mental or sometimes spiritual connection with a person from another realm or place. Soul bonds often resemble fictional characters because they are the non-fictional counterparts from another part of existence separate from our own. The person from this world or place is known as the soul bonder and the person from the other place is known as the soul bond. So yeah, you heard that right. This is a community of people all over the internet, but specifically today we're gonna to be talking about the Tumblr communities, who, they come from a whole range of backgrounds, they're of all ages, it's not just teenagers. One of the kind of big popular blogs I found in particular was run by a 31 year old, I think. They, they seriously believe that there are other worlds out there where fictional characters from our world are real there, if that makes sense. And somehow these characters or people's spirits somehow come through to our world and connect mentally or spiritually with people and they can like hear each other's thoughts and communicate and they have this like special connection. This is why at first I thought it was kind of a bit of a joke but then you read more about it and you do you do start to worry about people but but more of that in a minute. So another blog goes on to talk about how soul bonding can be thought of as a form of channeling or mediumship, which is kind of a whole other issue in itself. And then some blogs go even further by offering kind of like lists of criteria um, for like how to know if you're a soul bonder. Uh, some of the lists include things like this. So you're a writer or role player whose fictional characters have a will of their own or refuse to do what they're supposed to. You experience fictional entities sharing your mind or body in a unique way. You have the sense that fictional characters spontaneously or gradually take up re residence in your mind as full people. You feel like you can channel fictional characters' spirits the way a medium would channel the spirits of dead people. You have a fully or partially realised internal space where characters interact in your mind with one another and or with you. And there's a whole bunch of others, um, things like you pose a question mentally to a character and they answer back. You sense the presence of a certain character in your mind mentally or emotionally. You feel an emotional connection or friendship with a character that feels returned. If any of these sound like experiences you've had, you might be a soul bonder. And then there's another blog which defines like categories or types of soul bonding. Um, they mention ones like long distance soul bonding, when the soul bond doesn't leave wherever they are from. The soul bonder might often see their soul bonds in dreams or visions, or they might hear their voice from time to time amongst other things. Neither the soul bond or the soul bonder ever leave where they live. And, and then it gives a couple of others, you can read about them for yourself. So this, this was all kind of like slightly bizarre to me, but then I got thinking about maybe this is kind of some form of like multiple personality or disassociative identity disorder, right? I mean, these are people who are imagining or experiencing other people or personalities in their mind and they're applying familiar characteristics to them in the form of, you know, comparing them to think or, you know, thinking of them as fictional characters, right? So I was immediately thinking, yeah, it's probably DID, right? But the people who are talking about this and saying they experience it, they're kind of almost self-aware to some extent in the sense that they are adamant they don't have DID. They're like, it's definitely, definitely not that. And there's a lot of blogs talking about how 
you know, this is a real thing, it's not just a mental disorder. There's this one blog in particular that argues they don't have DID while admitting they don't actually know what defines it. So they wrote, I'm not aware of the definition for multiple personality disorder, but I'd place a moderate amount of money on the bet that it includes the words unnecessary suffering and maladaption to society. <laughs> So, you know, it's always a good start when you make a big sweeping assumption about something and about official definitions of things without, you know, actually bothering to look it up or do any research. And it's even better when you make big claims based on those assumptions that you haven't researched. I mean, I swear at this rate this could have been written by Ken Ham, right? Okay, I'm being, I'm being a little bit kind of like salty about that. But that blogger in particular goes on to argue that soul bonds aren't a mental illness because they don't harm the individual or society. And now I'm no psychiatrist, and I'm not an expert in mental illness, but I'm pretty sure they aren't the like only criteria for defining a mental illness, right? I did look up, like, you know, a very generic definition of a mental illness, and it told me that um, mental illnesses are just changes in thinking, emotion, or behaviour. Simple as that. And let's be honest, if you think you share some kind of spiritual connection with a being from another world, that's not normal. That's a change from the norm. So I reckon, yeah, this is likely to be classified as some kind of mental illness or mental disorder. And I don't, I don't think it's offensive to say that. I think it's just what it is. All that said, I want to be very careful not to try and like diagnose these people and say, well, clearly they have X illness because I'm gonna keep saying it I'm not an expert in this stuff but I am just gonna throw out that from what I've read from these people it does seem that there's something definitely out of the ordinary here and I think it definitely suggests some kind of underlying psychological issue and I wouldn't be surprised if in at least some of the extreme cases there are some kind of links to disassociative identity disorder what is interesting is that if you do go on Tumblr and you look at the community of people on there who have like actual diagnosed disassociative identity disorder, they really, really don't like the soul bonding community, or at least most of them don't. And to be honest, it is pretty understandable because here are a couple of like example posts from one blogger in particular. Um, but it does feel in a lot of cases like they're either glamorizing DID or they're just kind of undermining what people with actual DID have to go through. So it's understandable why the kind of two communities don't get on, if that makes sense. All this said, I would say that from what I kind of just observed of the community, it seems there are definitely people at different kind of levels of what they believe and how much they believe and so on. Personally, I think the most concerning group are the people who genuinely believe in these what I can only really like describe as delusions, and I don't want that to sound rude, but it's kind of the best word for it, if that makes sense. Um, and they not only like believe in these delusions, and they don't only like share these delusions with others, but they encourage other often vulnerable people to believe in it too. And they have this voice that kind of has so much like authority to it that, you know, especially if you're a younger person or a vulnerable person, it's easy to see why you'd believe it. One post which I found really telling was this one where um, the person describes how having soul bonds has helped them during times of anxiety, trauma and abuse. So it seems to me that the people who think they have these soul bonds will often have created them as a result of difficult circumstances, even if they don't necessarily realise that that's what they've done. Again, this is like really reminiscent to me of how some people with DID create like alters or alternate personalities or whatever to cope with emotionally difficult situations such as abuse. Um, so again, I'm no expert, but I do kind of like hypothesize that there are some similarities between them. But like I say, I can't say for certain. One of the things that I did find really interesting in this community is how much people actually believe in this stuff. Um, people post about other universes and other worlds where characters who are fiction in our universe are real over there. And while that sounds like such a kind of silly thing to someone like me, it is interesting to see how much they, they fully believe in it and they're really invested in this worldview. Uh, they talk about these things with such certainty and yet to be honest they have no proof of it other than just what's going on in their heads. 
And just the numbers of people who believe in this stuff is really kind of shocking to me, I guess. But what I do think is important to realise is that a lot of the people who are asking to learn more about this stuff are honestly pretty vulnerable people and I think they'd be willing to accept pretty much any explanation coming from someone with an authoritative voice which the people who run a lot of these blogs do tend to have. One example of this is um, there's this post in particular that talks about where the fictional soul bonds come from. It reads, fictional soul bonds are beings from a universe where they actually exist. They get attracted to you for one reason or another, either via their own spiritual plane or by magical means if it exists there. Yes, sometimes liking that show or character can be a factor, but not all the time. They become metaphysical beings here because of the link created between them and the bonder. There are many dimensions out there in the big multiverse, so it shouldn't be surprising that there is a dimension where the fictional stories we read are real. It's just... <laughs> this stuff sounds so silly, but the way they write it, like, it makes it sound as though this is fact, this is documented, we know full well this is exactly what happens. So it's easy to see how some people can kind of easily fall into believing it, if you know what I mean. Um, another example would be this second post, um, which tries to claim that soul bonding can like happen in reverse, kind of. So a person asks, how does soul bonding work? How do the characters get into people's heads? And why don't we in this realm ever go into other characters' heads? This blogger replies saying, actually people in this realm do sometimes go into other characters' heads. As for how it works, I'm not entirely sure. What we know is there's been a kind of there has to be a kind of mental or emotional connection established and it just happens and so on. So what it's kind of like interesting to see is that these aren't just a bunch of kind of like hipster kids going, ooh, look how quirky I am. I have so-and-so in my head and we we have this bond and we, we talk and we're friends. It, it's not just kind of like attention-seeking behaviour in that respect. Some people get so into this and they believe it so much that they literally start to kind of like get concerned for this person that they're like soul bonded with. Like there was this one Tumblr user who um, wrote, recently I ended up soul bonding with a specific character and while we get along pretty great he misses another character from his world a lot. I was trying to contact them and see if they want to join us here would something like this be possible? And it's just, it seems like such a silly thing, but this person is clearly so, like, invested in, again, not to sound rude, but in these delusions that he's created, like, a whole kind of second world that he thoroughly believes in and tries to contact, and yeah. Another thing it's important to talk about is that soul bonding isn't just, like, an isolated phenomenon. Um, it seems to have similarities with other kind of, like, communities or things that they talk about on places like Tumblr, such as Fiction Kin. So one blog describes Fiction Kin as someone who discovers through personal experiences and phenomena that they are spiritually or mentally any person who appears as a character in fiction or a member of a fictional species. What I also found really interesting was that while I was reading this blog in particular, they mentioned something called Coping Linker, which they define as someone who takes on the identity or persona of any creature or fictional character in order to cope with mental illness, trauma, or other emotional factors. So what was interesting was that this blog in particular was using this as a way to say, yeah, no, there's a distinct difference. Some people do that, but we're not. We're genuinely bonding with other souls. We're genuinely, you know, like fictional characters in our head. But personally, I'd argue that by these definitions alone, everyone I've spoken about in this video, everyone I've mentioned, all the posts we've seen, are just people being coping linkers, and I think a lot of them are completely in denial about that, to be honest. But ultimately what this has taught me is that there are a lot of people out there who are hurting in one way or another, and they're doing whatever it takes to cope with it. And while I initially thought this was going to be a bit of a silly, fun video, a bit of a laugh, we could just mock some silly teenagers, what I've actually taken away from this is that there are a lot of people out there who are struggling with things, and they aren't getting the help that they need and the help that they deserve. And I think that's a really sad thing. There are definitely certain people out there and certain bloggers who, even though they think they're trying to help, they definitely kind of like aggravate the situation a bit and definitely make it worse and kind of they, they, again, I don't like to use the word delusions because I think it sounds a bit rude, but they definitely 
encourage these delusions when they shouldn't be. And I think a lot of the time it is because they don't know any better and they fully believe them as well and they think that what they're doing is helping people. But the point is, yeah, I went into this thinking it would be fun and ended up coming away feeling a lot of concern for quite a lot of people. And like I say, this isn't actually just teenagers, there's a lot of people out there of a lot of different ages and a lot of different backgrounds who thoroughly believe in this stuff and I just, I found it really interesting and thought we should talk about it and kind of, I don't know, raise a bit of awareness if that makes sense. I found this quite interesting and a little bit concerning but I'd like to know your thoughts. Have you ever heard of people who think they're soul bonders or they're soul bonded with someone? What do you think of, you know, do, do you think these people are just kind of like attention seeking? Do you think they actually have a mental illness or do you actually think they have a spiritual connection to another world. I don't know, let me know your thoughts. And if you have any other suggestions for kind of Tumblr related videos in the future, please let me know those in the comments below. As another little random thing, Zoe Does Life, you know I love her, she started making a few videos over on her channel about Tumblr. I think her first one was about fat acceptance on there and she's great, the videos are interesting, so I totally encourage you to go over there and watch those and check them out. I will link it below, but for now, thank you so much for watching this, I really really do appreciate it, and I'll see you again soon. A huge thank you to everyone supporting me on Patreon this month, including Secular Reason, Lucky Scott, Jaden Shepard, Jared Moore, Sir Michael Moore, and Matthew Minamore, plus everyone else who's mentioned on the end screen here and down in the description below, like I cannot thank you all enough, you're all incredible.